So to come back to the schools of thought, uh, the new classical econ economists have built on sort of the logic of, of monetarism, the logic of the quantity theory, uh, but putting it on more rigorous Valrasian modeling foundations. Uh, New Keynesians take the quantity equation but add sort of stickiness to prices and wages to explain why monetary policy shocks have real effects in the short run. Um, now I should say that you know, this does not exhaust all models in economics. These are just business cycle models. So there's sort of more consensus, I think, on what matters for the long run. And I said in my first lecture, if you could raise the growth rate in the economy by even half a percent a year on a sustained basis, that would do a lot more for the next generation than even flattening out business cycles completely. Um, and then there's a sort of synthesis going on in the profession between new classical and new Keynesian models known as dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models. So we take the general equilibrium modeling framework right, where everybody's optimizing, markets are clearing. But if we introduce certain kinds of stickiness, uh, then we can get dynamic effects from real shocks or from policy shocks. We can simulate something that looks like business cycles. Now, it should be mentioned that I mean, this is a great intellectual achievement, but it didn't do too well at predicting the financial crisis or the depths of the recession that followed. Uh, so still some tweaking that needs to be done. Um, whereas people who were taking the Vixellian approach uh, were, were sounding warnings that we've hold, we're holding interest rates too low for too long. We've got a bubble building up in real estate. Uh, so next week, I'll talk about what the Federal Reserve does and its role in uh, monetary policy, more about the uh, recent boom and bust, uh, the current policies of quantitative easing and zero interest and interest on reserves. Uh, but I, the message is going to be that the, the hopes we had for fine tuning the economy through scientific macroeconomic management haven't really panned out. Now, this phrase fine tuning was used by uh, the members of the Council of Economic Advisors. Uh, I think Walter Heller was the one who used that phrase. And he later said, oh, I didn't mean fine tuning. I meant gross tuning. Uh, but either phrase is probably a mystery to people who are raised on digital technology. So I need to explain it to you. In the old days, when you wanted to tune your TV set, you actually had a dial because you had an antenna on your roof. Uh, so there was a gross tuning dial, and then there was a fine tuning dial. So the idea that you could fine tune the economy meant that you could sort of home in on the right settings for monetary and fiscal policy to put the economy on an even path. Uh, well, turned out we're not as good at that as we hoped we would be. Uh, so there are two things left for us to do if we sort of give up the pretension that we're going to fine tune the economy. One is to figure out how we can at least prevent the Fed from amplifying business cycles. Uh, and the other, of course, is to think about better macroeconomic performance in a longer perspective. Right? How can we promote a healthy rate of economic growth, not try to stimulate or goose the economy or boost output in, in some temporary way, but what kind of policies matter for capital formation and for technological innovation, which are the two drivers of long-run growth. <laughs>